Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Abimbola. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to create a transparent corset base with a deep V plunged neckline. So your transparent corset can be used for your bridal or ashwabi dresses. And in this video, I'm also going to show you how to add your yoke to the transparent corset. So if this sounds like something you are interested in, something you would like to learn, please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Now let's dive into today's video. So in this tutorial, I'll be working with the two nets. I'll be working with a corset mesh and also Ankara fabric. So these are the materials I'll be working with. I'll also be working with my boning. That's the regular bone, the sewable bone of about 0.5 inches. So here I have my horizontal lines already marked out on my pattern paper. So the first line which I have there is my chest line. And then I have my bust point on the bust, half length, and my corset blouse length. So I'll go ahead to label it now. The chest line, the bust line, the bust point rather, the under bust, the half length, and also my corset blouse length. So for the corset blouse length, you can actually come down from your half length by five inches or four inches depending on the style you are working with there are some styles that you go beyond five inches so as usual for my shoulder slope i came down by 1.5 to get my shoulder slope for my neck width i used 3.5 and for my neck depth 3.5 so i connected all the points together my neck width and depth and connected my neck width to my shoulder slope so next thing i would do now is to get my bust pan measurement divided by four the bust pan is also the same as the nipple to nipple measurement so i divided my bust pan into two and then i went ahead to take that measurement on my bust point and also on the corset blouse length so i'll be connecting the two points together from the bust point to my blouse length for my underboss tightening, I will go ahead and take 0.75 inches to um, towards the center front, that's on the left side of my pattern, and then I will take 1.25 inches on the other side. I will repeat the same thing on my corset blouse length, 0.75 on the left and 1.25 on the right. I'll go ahead to connect the points together. Now, I'll go ahead to connect my underboss tightening to the boss point. So, I'll be using my curve ruler to connect it from the boss point to the underboss on both sides of my pattern paper. Now, at this point, I will determine how wide I want my um, V neckline to be at the bust point. So, um, for me, I went ahead to use 0.75 inches. Now, note that you can use 0.5, you can even use one inch, depending on how wide you want that part to be. And then, for the depth, you also need to determine how deep you want your V neckline to be. So, for me, I came down from my under bust for um, about 0.75 inches. So, I connected from the bust point 0.75 to my underbust region that's 0.75 inches below my underbust now note that you can actually come down to any level of your choice some deep v um, neckline actually gets to the half length some actually stops at the underbust so it depends on what you want to achieve so but for this tutorial purpose i came down from the underbust by 0.75 so for my overbust line from the chest line i went ahead to take 1.5 inches that's for my overbust line so i marked that point and then i will rule that part with my ruler now that we marked our overbust line we go ahead to do the overbust tightening and to do that i would take the measurement i have for my shoulder and then i'll divide that into two and then from the midpoint of my shoulder i'll connect it straight to my bust point like so once i'm done with that i'll go ahead and do my overbust tightening on the right, I take 0.75 and on the left, I take 0.75. So I have a total of 1.5 inches for my overbust tightening. So next, I would now connect my overbust 
to my boss point using my curved ruler. I will repeat the same thing on the other side of my pattern paper like so. So the next thing I will do is to connect our overboss tightening to the um, 0.75 inches for our V neckline. So I'll, I'm actually looking for the best um, part of the curved ruler to use for this. So and once I get that, I connect the two points together like so. So after connecting, this is what I have. Now, um, to work on the other side, I need to get my arm all done. So I'll divide my um, line into two to get the midpoint of my arm all, and then I'll mark that point. I'll go in by half an inch at that point, and then on the, my chest line, I'll take my bust measurement divided by four, and then I'll mark it. So I'll connect the three points together with my curved ruler like so. Now that that is done, the next thing I will do is to connect the other side of my overbust into my arm hole. So just look at the way my curved ruler is placed. I'll connect it like so into my arm hole. So this is what we have after um, connecting the overbust to the chair, um, arm hole. So the next thing I will do is to take my half length, sorry, my waist measurement on my half length. So I went ahead to divide my waist into four, and then I took one inch out of the result. That's my waist divided by four is nine minus one, that's eight. So I took eight inches. Now I also go ahead and replace my um, underbust that intake, that's the two inches, was added to the waist measurement at the side. So I'll connect my waist to my bust, and then I will take my bust that, which is two inches, I'll take my bust that measurement. I came down from the bust point by two inches and then I'll connect it to my bust span. That's my bust span divided by two. That's the nipple point. So I'm connecting it like so. Now that we are done with that, I need to confirm that my dart legs are matching up together. That's the overbust um, dart which we created. So I went ahead to take the measurement of the dart leg on the right side and also the one on the left side. So I discovered that I have about 0 0.2 inches or thereabouts. I have a little shortage on that part. And that is what you see me mark there. So I'll go ahead now to reconnect my curve from the deep V, which we already shaped out. I'll reconnect it, I'll blend it in like so, and then also use my curved ruler to blend that part. So now this is what I have after doing so. So I went ahead to use my marker pen to trace out my bust area. So I'll be connecting from my under bust to the 0 0.75, which is our deep V neckline opening at the bust point like so. So I connected the two points together. Now on the chest line, I'll go in by 1.5 inches and then I'll mark that point. And from my 1.5 inches, I'll also connect it back to my under bust. Now, before I get that done, on the corset blouse length, I'll go ahead and take my upper hip measurement. Now, the upper hip measurement can be taken on the client's body or on your body. Or if you want to avoid taking this measurement, all you need to do is to draw your pattern to the hip line. And then when you get the hip measurement on the hip line, you now um, consider the length of your corset and then you mark that point. And that is that will serve as your um, upper hip measurement but for me I didn't get to draw my hip line because I already um, know my upper hip measurement so I just went ahead to take this measurement on the corset blouse length so this is what I was marking there and I also replaced the two inches which was used as our um, underboss tightening was replaced back so I'll go ahead to connect from my waist to the hip line and now the next thing to do is to draw a cup. But before that is done, I need to open up um, the darts on our pattern. So I slash through from the corset blouse length to my bust point. And then I also slash through by the side of my pattern so that I'll be able to um, close up my bust darts. Now I'll close up my bust darts like so. And then I'll hold it down with my paper tape. So the next thing I will do now is to blend it in from my um, bust back into uh, my waist. As I will blend in that part together. 
and now I can finish up drawing my cup on the other side now that the bust that is closed so I'll go ahead to draw to connect from the 1.5 inches that we came in at the chest line to my under bust like so and this is what we have for the front pattern so the next thing I will do is um, to cut out the pattern but before we do that let's work on the back pattern so for the back I also have my um, back pattern that's the lines marked out I have um, the chest line the back half length and then the corset blouse length also marked out I have um, my shoulder slope which is one inch for the back and then the neck with 3.5 inches and my neck depth 1.5 inches so these are the measurements I used for the back the next thing I would do is to um, get my armhole for the back done I'll divide the line into two go in by half an inch and then on the chest line I will take my chest um, bust measurement divided by four and then I'll connect all the three points together using my curved ruler now I will take my um, waist measurement divided by four minus one inch for our snatching I'll take that on the um, half length that's my waist measurement minus one inch is eight inches so I marked that and then I'll be connecting it um, from the waist to my bust measurement on the chest line and then I'll also take my upper hip measurement on the corset blouse length I'll take that measurement like so and that is 11 and then I'll connect it to my um, waist measurement so like I said if you don't know how to get your corset blouse length all you need to do is to um, get your hip line and then take your hip measurement on the hip line and you determine where you want your corset blouse to end so wherever that ends that is the point you would uh, mark so on my chest line at the center back I came down by one inch and then I'll connect from my one inch at that point to um, my arm hole so now on the new line which we just marked I will then go ahead and determine my back opening for the corset so I'm making use of one inch for my back opening so I marked one inch at that line and also on my corset blouse length and then I'll connect the two points together at the side of my corset blouse I came up by one inch and then with my curved ruler I blended that into the hem of the corset blouse now I went ahead to highlight all my markings and then this um, will be the parts for the eyelids so this back pattern doesn't have any dart on it so it's actually dartless and that will be my eyelids um, stand for the yoke back opening I decided where I want the yoke to um, stop and then um, for my button or the hook for the yoke I came down by two inches and then I'll connect it from that two inches into um, the markings I have on the um, back bodies to avoid gaping on my yoke I'll go up by half an inch on that part for to create a dart on that part and then I will take my I will extend the half an inch into my arm hole like so I will extend it now I'm done creating that dart and this part will be taken out of the pattern so guys if you have found value watching today's tutorial please hit on the subscribe button subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up share with your friends so now I have the back yoke I'll go ahead now and cut out my um, pattern for the back so here I'm done cutting the back and so we can head back to the front and finish up with the front pattern so first I will take out my um, v plunged neckline so i'll cut through like so so please ensure that you mark the points where the v ends on your pattern paper and you also notch it on your fabric when cutting and then i have a part cut out already which is the center front i'll label that part and also i have the side front so for the yoke i will just smoothen that part out and then I would um, cut it out so I am doing this so that for the people who asked can't we make use of um, the yoke from our pattern yes you can make use of the yoke from your pattern and this is exactly what I am doing 
in this tutorial. In the other one, we actually drafted a separate yoke for the other transparent corsets. So if you have not seen that video, you can um, actually check on my channel to see how you can drape your yoke on your transparent corset. So this is another method entirely different from the previous one. Another thing to note in this um, tutorial is that we will be making use of the cup from our pattern. So unlike the other transparent corset, which I showed you how to make use of another cup for your for your corset. So for this one, we're making use of the um, cup from our pattern. So I will take you through the process on how to do this and have a very good result at the end. So I'll take out the cup now. But before I do that, I'll label my cups. I have one and two. For now, this is a two-part cup that we have here. So I actually want to uh, make use of a three-part cup. So, and we have to get that even from this that we already drafted. So sit back and I will show you how to get this done. So I'm taking out my um, pattern for the cup area from the front pattern. And I'll do the same for the other side. So this is what we have after cutting out our cup from our pattern. So I want you to look at this process closely. I'll go up now and close up my dart on the cup just exactly the way I would have done it when I am sewing my fabric together. So I'll be using this paper tape to represent the stitches on my fabric. So I will close it up like so with my paper tape. So at this point, I was almost done closing up um, the cup. So as you can see, you need to do it gradually so that you don't get things messed up. So I went ahead to um, join those the cup together. That's the one and two together so this is what we have after joining the two parts together so i also go ahead to close up my darts on the front pattern that is the underboss that that we created this is because i don't want any joining on the corset so i'll close up my darts with my paper tape like so after closing up my dart i taped down my cup to my um pattern for the front just to see how well my cup will sit on my um, pattern. So you can see what we have here. The cup is sitting very well on the pattern and it's looking so nice. So this is to let you know that you can actually picture your results from your pattern. So at this point, I wanted to tape down the front and the back pattern together at the side. And then I realized that I didn't mark the shape at the M, which I did for the back, I didn't mark that on the front. So I went ahead to um, match them up together like so. And then I did that marking and also cut out the shape for the front. So I just needed to explain this part as well. Now that I'm fine with the results that I have, I'll go ahead and take out my cup from my pattern. So this is my cup detached from the pattern. The next thing I would do is to create the three parts for my cup. Now I would do this without taking out the paper tape at the center. So at this point, you will determine how wide you want the upper parts to be. So I think I used 1.5 or 2 inches. Yes, so I marked um, 2 inches at that point. And also at the other side of my cup, I marked the same 2 inches. And then I connected my markings from the center front to the other side of the cup like so. So you just need to determine how wide you want that part to be. Now I'll go ahead to cut it out. That's my markings. I'll go ahead to cut it out. And before cutting out the other piece, I will label it 3 and 4. And then I'll go ahead to cut that out as well. So here is my pattern piece for the front without the yoke. And I have the other pattern as well. This is my back pattern. These are the yoke front and back, which I'll be working with. So like I said, I'll be making use of two net corset mesh and my Ankara fabric. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. I'll see you all in my next tutorial, which will be the sewing part of this deep V plunge neckline transparent corset. See you all. Bye for now.